High five and dive into the New Testament with Charlie and Abby and, and friends. Who's there? Ice cream soda. Ice cream soda who? Ice cream soda people can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the map and for the laughs. I got that joke this time. Me too. Let's see where the map takes us today. The map says we could find the bag at church. But it isn't Sunday. Well, maybe it means outside of the church. Let's go check it out. Let's scooter around the building and see if we see the bag. Oh, look, I found it by the door. We found it. Good job, Charlie. Let's see where the map says to go now. The map says we can find the bottle by a lamp line. Where are we gonna find one of those? Charlie, remember the one at the park? It is so fun, let's go. Oh look, it's on the seat. Let's grab it and go for a ride. Okay, we need to just find one more clue. The map says we could find the book by a soccer net. Oh, there's a net over there. Let's go. We found it. Let's get these home to Mom so she can help us. All right, I'll wait you home. Hi, Mom. We are tired. We ran all over to find the clues today. Yeah, I'm tired too. Hi kids, it sounds like you got some exercise today. We sure did. Let's see what you found. We found a book with more animal cards. A bag that has a soda can. Can I drink it? I love soda, especially root beer floats. And I'm thirsty. Me too. You probably need water since you were running around. Let's see what else is in the bag. There's also a book. I remember this book. My grandma taught me how to read it. Yes, and she taught me how to read too when I was a little girl. And we found a bottle. I blank follow Jesus. Okay, let's start with the red book. Abby, can you read a few pages? Sure. I can make picture pictures, can you? I can do tricks, can you? I can listen, can you? Yes, I can do those things too. We can do lots of things. What do you think is the most important thing that we can do? Let's find the answer in this week's scripture. Charlie, can you read it while I write it on the board? The scripture is in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19 and 20. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Let me tell you what happened before Jesus said, follow me. A man named Simon, who would later be called Peter, was a fisherman. He had been trying to catch fish all day, but he didn't catch anything. Jesus came and told him to throw his net into the water. Peter told Jesus, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Peter then took his net and threw it out into the water. Ah! <laughs> I caught me a big fish. Well, no, the scriptures do not say that, but it does say they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. They caught so many fish that their nets broke. They called their friends over to help them and filled two boats with so many fish that it almost sank. Then Jesus told them this scripture. Let's go back to our question we asked at the beginning. What do you think is the most important thing you could do? I can follow Jesus. Yes, that's right. Just like Jesus invited Peter and others to follow him, Jesus has invited you to follow him as well. Charlie, can you pass me the soda can? Here, Mom. Do you know how to make soda? No, what's in it? There are three main ingredients in soda. Let's put a can on the board. The first ingredient is water. The next thing we need to put into our can is CO2 or carbon dioxide. And the third is syrup or sugar. 
These main ingredients make soda. Let's add the words I can to our can and find out the three things we can do to be like Peter and the apostles who left their nets and followed Jesus. Number one, this one is obvious. I can follow Jesus because he is the living water. Did you know that Jesus is also called the living water? Now let's say it together. I can follow Jesus. Let's use our hands to sign the word follow. Everyone give me two thumbs up. Now put them together like this. And then we're going to move them forward just like this. Do you see that? One thumbs up in front of the other and then we're going to move it forward. This is the sign for follow. Good job. Have you ever played the game follow the leader or sing the song do as I'm doing? Let's play it and sing the song together. I'll go first. Everyone put your hands on your head. Everyone jump up and down. Now turn around and clap three times. Good, you followed really well. Abby, now it's your turn to be the leader. Tap your head and rub your belly. Now clap. Now snap. Now wink. Good job. You did a great job being the leader, Abby. And way to go, friends. You did a great job too, following her. Now let's sing one of my favorite primary songs, Do As I'm Doing. Charlie, do you want to pick something that everyone's going to do while we all sing the song together? Let's clap! Oh, that's a great one, Charlie. Everyone, let's clap and follow Charlie as we sing. Let's start on the count of three. One, two, three. Do as I'm doing, follow, follow me. Do as I'm doing, follow, follow me. If I do it high or low, if I do it fast or slow. Do as I'm doing, follow, follow me. Do as I'm doing, follow, follow me. Oh, that was so much fun. I love singing primary songs. Now we know that following someone means that we do the same things they do. Now, if I say, I can follow Jesus, that means we're going to do whatever he did. Let's try an experiment. Do you think we can get this can to follow this balloon? Let's pretend this can is us. Remember when we talked about how Jesus is the light of the world during Christmas? Well, inside this balloon is a light. This balloon will represent Jesus. It's hard to see with the lights on, so let's turn the lights off by you snapping in the count of three. Three, two, one. It's pretty bright. All right, snap your fingers again. Thanks for turning the lights back on. That was pretty cool. Let's see if we can get the can, you and me, to follow the balloon, Jesus. We need a little static electricity. Charlie and Abby, can I borrow your heads? Do you see how close I am to Jesus? Yes, you are pretty close. Yes, I am. The key to following someone is to stay close to them. If we are too far away, it's hard for us to see what they're doing and to follow them. For example, maybe we are so busy playing games all day or playing with our friends that we don't know where he went. We get distracted. It isn't bad to play games or play with our friends as long as we also remember to keep Jesus close, to remember him and to keep his commandments. When I was just a little girl, I must have gotten distracted while we were at the Grand Canyon. I didn't follow close enough to my family and I got lost. Luckily, I was safe and I found my family again. One of the covenants we make at baptism is that we'll always remember him. We stay close to Jesus. Let's say the first I can statement again together. I can follow Jesus. Good job. But mom, sometimes it's hard to follow Jesus. I know, Charlie, it can be hard. And that's why Heavenly Father gave us a very special gift. Remember how we talked about the bowling bumpers and GPS in our last video? The gift of the Holy Ghost is given to us after we are baptized. Let's talk about the second ingredient in soda, carbon dioxide. When carbon dioxide is added to water, and under pressure, it creates tiny little bubbles in soda. 
what do you think is going to happen to the carbon dioxide if I shake up this can really well and then I open it? It's gonna explode, duck it. Oh no, we're gonna die. I think you're safe, Charlie. Let's see what happens on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> That's a lot of fizz and bubbles. Let's pretend the carbon dioxide in the soda is like the Holy Ghost. Life can be hard and sometimes there's peer pressure, meaning other kids trying to get us not to follow Jesus. After we are baptized, we get the gift of the Holy Ghost to help us know right from wrong and to follow Jesus. Let's pretend this can is us again. Without the help from the Holy Ghost, it can be very hard to follow Jesus and know how to choose the right. Let's get some crushed soda. And this one is empty. It isn't filled with the Holy Ghost to help us and to help us overcome temptations. When we break commandments, like not being honest, we take something that isn't ours, we yell at our brother, or maybe we ignore a friend that needs our help. We get pretty crushed by all of these temptations and things that happen to us. Now, what do you think will happen to this can that is full of the spirit? Charlie, can you try to crush this can? I can't crush it. Abby, you try. <laughs> it's not crushing. It is pretty impossible. Even Charlie tried to hit it. If we have the Holy Ghost with us, prompting or telling us what we should or shouldn't do, it's much easier to follow Jesus. The second way we can be like Peter and Jesus' disciples is to follow the promptings of the Holy Ghost. Let's write our second I can statement on the board. Let's say the second I can statement together. I can follow the promptings of the Holy Ghost. For example, you might get a thought to say hi to someone at school, or you might feel like you should go give your grandma a hug and tell her you love her. In the Book of Mormon, Moroni taught us that all things which are good cometh of God. Behold, that which is of God inviteth and enticeth to do good continually. Wherefore, everything which inviteth and enticeth to do good and to love God and to serve him is inspired of God. The third ingredient we need to make soda is sugar. Raise your hand if you like sugar. Me too. Sugar is sweet. That's why we like it so much. As we follow Jesus and follow the promptings of the Holy Ghost, we can help others follow Jesus and feel the sweetness of the gospel. As we help others, we feel good inside too. We get a sweet feeling that our Heavenly Father is happy. Do you know what the sign for help is? Well, it's very similar to our follow sign. Everyone give yourself a thumbs up. You are amazing. Now place your right hand on top of your left hand like this. And we're going to move our hands forward like this. This is a sign for help. I love this sign because it's like we're lifting other people up. That's what we do when we help others. As we follow Jesus and follow the promptings of the Holy Ghost, we naturally have a desire or we want to help others. Let's write our third and last I can statement on the board. Let's say it together. I can help others follow Jesus. But how can we know what he did so we can follow him? That's a good question. As we read the scriptures, especially in the New Testament, we can learn what Jesus did and do the same things. Can you think of anything Jesus did when he was on the earth or when he visited the people after he was resurrected? He blessed the children and loved them. He calmed the sea. He fed the 5,000. This is kind of like a Christmas countdown. Oh yeah, we do it every year. Each day we learn about something Jesus did, and then we follow him. Yes, Abby, that's right. What are some of the other things Jesus did? He loved others. Yes, if he did those things and we are supposed to follow him, then we should try to do the same. But how do we calm a storm? Well, with God, nothing is impossible. 
So if he needed to calm a storm, he can help us do it with his power, priesthood power. When my dad was on a mission serving the Indians, he had a similar experience, not with the sea, but with the rain. The missionaries were preparing for a luau. That's a big party with yummy food, music, and dancing. The elders were trying to cook a pig in the ground. Let's read from my dad's journal and see what happened. While we were at Fort Thompson, it rained the first day. We were worried about the weather being bad. It rained the whole week. We got the wood and rocks and dug the hole while it was raining. It rained so hard that the hole filled up with water just before we got ready to put the rocks and wood in the hole. We prayed that it would stop raining. During the prayer, I was listening for the rain to stop. And as soon as we ended our prayer, the rain stopped. After that, it didn't rain a drop until Sunday morning when we were ready to leave. It was a testimony to me to see the priesthood that we had stop the rain. I know that the priesthood is a power of God. This is true. I know it. Do you know what stood out to me besides the amazing miracle of the rain stopping? It was that my dad was listening during the prayer for it to stop. He had perfect faith that if he asked God, God would make the rain stop. Like it says in Matthew 17, 20, if ye have faith, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Wow, that's amazing. Papa followed Jesus and had faith in him. But your Papa has a lot of faith and always tries to follow Jesus. He helped me learn how to follow Jesus. And I'm helping you. Having faith in Jesus is one of the most important steps in following him. You don't need to stop the rain or calm the sea, but you can help others in your own very special way. You can be kind to someone. You can help someone feel loved when they are lonely. That is how you can calm the sea for someone else. Jesus also fed the 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes. You could share your lunch with a friend or help cook dinner at home. There are many ways you can follow Jesus right now. You can become his hands. Let's try one more experiment with dominoes. Charlie and Abby, I need your help. Can you set up these dominoes right here? Sure, mom. While Abby and Charlie are working on setting them up, let me show you one very special domino. Let's pretend this is you, or if you're a boy, this is you. You are very special and important. Jesus needs you to follow him so that you can help him help others. You can be his helping hands. Now, if Jesus needs you to help someone, but they live on the other side of the world and you don't even know them, how do you think you can help? Well, Jesus taught us to focus on the one. We minister or help others one by one. We help the one right next to us, the one we know. We share our love and teach them to follow Jesus. Let's see what happens when we do that. Did we get to the person on the other side of the world? Yes, by loving, teaching, and serving one person who learns from us how to follow Jesus and does the same. We can help more people. It is like dropping a pebble or rock in the water and seeing the ripples grow and move through the water. You can start a chain reaction. You can be Jesus' helping hands and help others follow Jesus. Now, I am not a fisherman or a fisherwoman. I don't throw my net and catch people. Although that was fun catching Charlie and Abby. Instead, I can follow Jesus. I can follow the promptings of the Holy Ghost. And I can help others follow Jesus, just like Peter did. Now, before we go, let's decode the message in a bottle. The funny looking fish is C. The octopus is A. The clown fish is N. It spells can. I can follow Jesus. Friends, this is something you don't want to forget. So make sure to add it to your message in a bottle and put it by your bed. Read your messages often to remind you that Jesus loves you. And every time you see a soda can, especially an A and W, Remember that you and I can always walk with Jesus, just as Peter and the disciples did long ago. As you do, you will be happy too. I know God is very proud of you. You are his greatest treasure. You are his son or daughter. He loves his children. He loves you. Check your email for an idea to encourage you to help someone follow Jesus this week. I know you can do it. Thanks, friends, for joining us today. 
Pick one of the three icon statements and teach it to someone else. We will see you next week for another adventure. Until next time, remember, Jesus loves you. Bye, Bye my friends. friends. Thank you for watching this week's Come Follow Me episode. Here are three quick things that you could do right now. First, subscribe to our channel below and click on the bell to be notified when our next video is available. Number two, go to mtcforkids.com and click on Come Follow Me and download your lesson principles. And don't forget to join our scripture club. Third, share this video. Until next time, remember Jesus loves you. Bye, my friends.